Hi, I'm Tim Von Rieden here at cgcookie.com, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to talk about blood and how I'd go about drawing it step by step. In drawing blood that looks realistic can be tricky because it's thicker than water, but it's still a liquid, so it retains some of the properties, but you still want to make sure that you're making it look more like blood rather than water or something that would be thinner. And in this tutorial, I'm going to take you through three different concepts. So the first one is just drawing a material sphere of blood and what that would look like. And then the second one is drawing two drips of blood and how that would fall on a surface and the difference between that and something like water dripping on a wall. And then lastly, we're going to take these concepts into practice and then we're going to put it on a character. And then I'll show you how to make something look like a fresh wound or something make it look like so or like a wound that's been there for a while. And then after this tutorial, you should have a sufficient amount of knowledge to feel confident in making blood in your own work, whether it be on your characters or for a horror theme, whatever it may be. So without further ado, let's get started. So here in Photoshop, I have a simple canvas all laid out and ready to go. And then I also have the reference guide that was created for this tutorial open as well. Now, when working with blood in a concept piece, I could just go ahead and use one of the blood brushes that was created recently and if you're a system member, you are free to use them as well. And they're really good for laying out a quick blood splatter effect. But there are times when you're working on a concept piece that maybe, let's say, your character has a cut on the arm or something where you just want the blood dripping out and you have to actually draw it yourself. So it's good to kind of understand how to draw blood and work with it when you can't just rely on a brush. So before I even lay out any color on my canvas itself, I want to talk to you guys about blood because although it's a liquid, it's thicker. And you know that saying blood is thicker than water? Well, you want to apply that to the way you're treating it as a concept as well. So when working with it, you don't want to have it pool up like thin liquids would where it would be like a water raindrop kind of effect or kind of like slime, something like this, where you see it kind of pool up near the end where it has like a weight to it. But with blood, its consistency is pretty much the same in terms of like its width from the point that it starts to the point that it ends and usually that's like if it's on a surface or if it's you know dripping down skin you want to keep it practically the same width all the way throughout now everyone knows the color of blood is red but depending on what kind of a project you're working on you might not want to just choose a neon red to depict blood because if you're going for something that's more realistic based then you probably want to work with more dark hues and use red more as an accent. So you can think of blood more as like a scarlet, more of a rich color. And when blood pools up, or if it's dried, then it becomes very dark and almost black in color. And lastly, since it has a reflective surface to it, the highlights are going to be highly concentrated, so they're going to be very small, but don't forget to add them so that it doesn't look like the blood is just absorbing all the light because it does have that reflective property to it, so you want to make sure that you're reflecting light based on the direction that light's hitting it. All right, so now that we've gone through the basics of blood, I'm going to go ahead and get started. And then after I finish, then we're going to take a look at applying it to a character. And I have it on this other layer here. And pretty much we're just going to give her a few scratches and have some of that blood trailing down and some of it absorbing in her clothes to kind of give you an example of how to use it on a concept. All right. So on this new layer, I'm going to take you step by step through this reference guide that I have at the very top. And I'm only going to be using the five colors that are also displayed on the very, very top of the reference. And that's because for creating something as simple as blood, you don't need a whole vast variety of colors. You really only need a handful. So I'm going to take you step by step on how to do that with only these five colors. And for this tutorial, I'm going to be using a circle hard edge brush. And this is something that can be done with a whole variety of different brushes, but for this tutorial, I want to show you guys how you can do something like this using only the very basic brush. And I'm only having transfer turned on and not shape dynamics. Well, like I said, it's more of a personal preference. And let's go ahead and get started. So the top concept that I'm drawing is more just like a material study. And you'll see this a lot when um, people are doing material or texture studies. They'll draw that material or that texture on a sphere or even sometimes on a cube. And it's pretty much just to show off the properties of whatever it is that material is. And like I said with blood, for the second concept, I'm going to have it like rolling down a surface. So you can imagine 
um, some flat surface that this blood is rolling down. And like I said, I want to keep it pretty consistent in width all the way down. And maybe have it thicken up near the top. And already you can tell it's slanting just a bit. So I can easily adjust that with selecting it and then turning it. Something like that. And as I do these layers, I'll go ahead and put the color that I'm using in the very corner here. So then the other little details I was doing was just pretty much saying, okay, I want the, the lighting to come from this direction and that's where the shine would be. There might be some bounce reflective light hitting the bottom of this droplet. And then the lighting on the actual trail blood or the blood of or the trail of blood here would catch a lot of different reflections because it's irregular in its surface pattern. So you can say, see in the example, there are a lot of little specular lights and that adds that little depth of realism, but that's something we'll get to when we're at the very final step. So when everything's all outlined out, what I like to do is I like to build up my values through solid color. So here I'm just gonna go ahead and lay down my solid color. And to get a perfectly straight line, what you can do is on a Mac, if you hold shift, and I believe it's on a PC as well, pretty much any initial direction that you go in, that'll create a perfectly straight, either vertical or horizontal line, depending on the way you initially push on the tablet. So if I hold shift and go down, I'll create a vertical line. But then if I went left or right first, it would create a horizontal line. And another thing to note is as I get to the top area, I'm going to keep it um, less solid and more loose. And that's because the blood I'm imagining is pooling down and all the weight and consistency would be more near the droplet, where up here it's kind of thinning out. So this is where more some of that light red would be shown. And that'll make more sense as we get into the other colors, but you can leave the top more open-ended. And then for the droplet itself, I can literally just make my brush size about the size of the droplet and push down hard on the tablet. And there we go. So now from here, I'm going to make a new layer because now I'm going to delve into my colors. I'm going to choose that very first red that we have up there and also put it in this corner here. Now I'm going to build up my values through the way that I'm laying down my reds. So I'm imagining the lighting is coming from that overhead slightly to the side. And I can show that off by the way I'm laying down this red. And I'm going to build it the strongest on where the light is hitting it, the strongest, and then kind of like fade it around the sphere itself. So get a nice gradient going. And you can see how it like immediately that adds that sense of death and sense of uh, almost blood. We're getting there, but you can definitely tell this material has that deep scarlet look to it. And I always found red to be a very easy color to work with. And it's a color that I find I use as a complement to almost every color. So I can use it for my oranges and yellows to add more of that sense of warmth. But I've also found it really, it really works well with cool colors, especially with like purple. And if you're practicing just blending different colors, I would recommend just working with red a lot. And I'm probably a little biased because red is my favorite color and <laughs> I like to use it a lot in any of my work. So now this is something important to note as I'm laying down this red on the actual part where it's dripping near the very base. So this part at the very end where it's, you know, that drip, I'm going to leave it darker. And that's because that's, I imagine that's where there's the most blood from it falling on this, I don't know if it's a surface or skin, whatever it may be, but it's that's where the darkest it would be because the point from where it leaves here to here, it's about the same consistency and it's that red because it's thinner. So you can see more, you can see through it more. But then where the driplet is, so the very end here, 
it's all pulled up and it's you know it's running down so it'll be darker in color because it's thicker so that's the way you can think about blood and then up here I'm still doing that fading effect where I'm leaving it more open-ended and there we go so now we can go on to the next part and pretty much I'm gonna be repeating these steps until I get to the actual reflection part so I'm gonna go ahead and did what I just did grab that next color on my reference and do the same blending technique. So make it strongest where the light's hitting out and then blend it out to the edges. But for this color, I'm gonna be more precise. So I'm not gonna push as far as I did with the last color. And that's because this color is definitely more vibrant and more saturated. So I wanna be careful, I might even erase some of it. That if I cover the entire sphere with this color, it loses that gradient and it becomes um, not so much of a value transition from this, you know, more saturated red to this almost black looking color. And that's what we're going for. So you can really see that nice buildup of color and that really rounds out that sphere. And if you want, you could even mask this out if you really want to get close to the edges, but you're worried about whether or not um, you'll stay inside of the edges. And if you don't know how to mask, we have a tutorial on that, and you can check that out. And I believe it's under the Fundamentals tab at the very top menu. Something like that. And then I'm actually going to make a new layer because I'm going to go outside of the edge on the very top here, on where it's like transitioning out into the actual background. And I'm going to work this red down into the piece, just like we did the last one. So I'm going to keep it more red, and then as it gets closer to that drip, I'm going to let it become thicker in that color, which in turn would be darker. So now in this area where it's kind of like this shape right here, you don't want it to be just consistent all the way through. You want to make it look as if, you know, there's been a strange way of it dripping in itself into the drips. So if I just made it like a flat color, it wouldn't be quite nearly as interesting as if we threw in different patterns and shapes, but still make it look like um, blood in the way that this liquid would work. All right, so once again, I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna grab that very, very saturated red and I'm going to use this very sparingly. And I'm going to act, or I'm going to place this where it would catch most of the light. And then the specular would pretty much be placed right on top of it. And usually I put the more saturated, this really intense red, in areas where the blood might be thinner. So usually, like if it was running down, like we are in this example, then I would put more of the saturated red near the top. And then as we get down to the drip down there, I kind of leave it dark and I don't even really touch most of the areas with this color. And then I'm going to do just a little cleanup work. So in areas where you can really see a lot of the brush strokes and you want it to be just a little bit more smooth, then I can just pull up my eyedropper tool with Alt or option on a Mac and just blend it through and through. But I don't want to over blend because I still want some of that edge work to be shown, but just enough where it doesn't look, you know, sloppy. All right, so now I'm going to get onto my final layer. So I'm going to make one more new layer, grab that highlight specular color. I'm going to go ahead and lay it out underneath all these other colors. So I'm going to make my brush size really small. And that's because I want it to look very highly concentrated. And you can see as I lay it on this blood droplet up here, that really adds that sense of a, you know, of a sheen to the blood or like a 
uh, shiny or a very reflective surface, I guess. And you want to be very careful with how you laid out because if I did a very soft brush, so let me change my hardness on this, you had it more transition out, then you're going for more of almost like a metal property. And for blood, we want to keep it more concentrated, so not as wide in range. So something like that really makes it read more as a shiny surface, but not overly reflective like metal would be. And it's really easy to place highlights on an object that's round because you just pretty much say, okay, well, where's the light coming from? And then, ref you know, place your highlight accordingly. But in a place where it's really irregular, you can have to kind of think about, okay, the light would be hitting here pretty strong. Pretty much look for different little bumps or creases where the actual form would be curved over and it would be catching the light where that curve would be at its high point. So it may look like I'm just placing in highlights randomly, but I'm really thinking about, okay, where would this this form, so I'm thinking, okay, there's like a hump here, so I have to add an highlight right on that top of the, that edge. And then as we get into the driplet itself, it would stay pretty consistent because it, from this point to this point, it is pretty, it's fairly consistent in the terms of like how thick it is, but then as we get to the drop itself, and if we look at like a side view, you can imagine that the drop is coming off of the surface and that the light would be hitting it and then we would be casting a highlight right there. So let me erase that. So I'm going to make my brush size really small. And try to match the same angle that I have up here with that droplet. I'm going to do it on both of them. And something kind of fun that you can do is you can add just a slight uh, bounce lighting on the very bottom of that triplet and that will really emphasize that that triplet has like a round or like a a rounded bottom you can really see how that adds more form to it as well and there we go so one last thing that I could do and it's not even in my reference example is where the blood gets really thin I could even show some of that background color being shown through. And that'll kind of show that, you know, there isn't as much blood consistency on certain areas as there are other areas. So it's just one more of those things that could add a nice little touch of realism. And it adds a little more interest too as well because you're throwing in another color into the mix, especially a neutral color. Um, into this solid red that we had before. All right, so this is my example of going through blood, but that's really easy when you're not working on a concept itself. So now let's put what we learned into practice and put it on a character. So I'm going to put all these layers in a folder that we just did. And then I'm going to hide that layer. Then I'm going to turn on my character layer. So now I'm going to make a new layer above that character layer. I'm going to go ahead and go through that process that we just went to, through, but on different areas of the character. So let's start off by just adding maybe some more of that red color to the different wound, wounded areas. So maybe like on these bandages, maybe it will, will like enhance some of those scars, make them look like they're more fresh cut, like as if she was like running from something. She's got cut up. Now, for clothes, I don't really like using very saturated, you know, those neon reds. I like to make them very dark, and that's because when your clothes absorb blood, and then when it dries, it has a very dark uh, color to it. And to have it be more of this scarlet red, reads as more like wet and more fresh, but you want it to read as like the blood's been there for a while, and it's dried into the clothes, and it's permanently stained them. But we'll still add a little color to it, but we'll sh I'll show you how to do that after we lay down our, our base hue here. 
So right now I'm only working with this color and I'll do the same thing like I did before where I'll lay down the colors in the corner. So maybe we'll have a few drips down the arm and then it would absorb into that bandage. And that's something that's very crucial to think about when you're doing something like this is, okay, well on the skin it would travel down, it wouldn't really pool up or wouldn't spread anywhere, but then as it hits the fabric, fabric will absorb that blood and then kind of transition it out. So then maybe we'll have one on the leg. And then we'll also do a droplet of where it dropped. So let's imagine, let's say, if she got like cut on the arm and maybe one of those drops fell and then hit her leg. Well, it wouldn't start from the clothing then. It would start at a random point wherever it fell and landed. And then it would just drip down from there. And then maybe lastly we'll give her just a slightly bloody lip. And then just hints of like a black eye area. So we're imagining that this girl's a fighter. Like we don't know what happened to her, but we know that you know something happened where she was either in a fight or she had to run from something and she got injured pretty bad. So the way that you lay out stuff like this can really tell a story of a character without even having to say anything. The viewer can just gather that information just from looking at it. So then if I hide that layer, you can see all the things that we're adding to it right now. So I'm gonna make a new layer that color in the corner. Now this is where I will add some of that red hue to the clothes, but I won't go much brighter than this. And even now I'm pushing on the tablet really, really lightly, and I'm just wanting just a hint of that red. And in areas where there's like a cut, the way that your skin responds to things is it becomes irritated. So it would have that red complexion around the area or the wound itself. Then in areas like the bruise, you might want to Google image search just bruises in general because they actually have a lot of different colors where there's a lot of purples and even yellows where people assume that you know a black eye or a bruised eye is just purely like a purple color but it has a, a few different variations of colors and you wanna make sure if you're going for that realistic look to pull in those colors as well. Now to make it look like she like really damaged her eye, uh, you wanna make it the eye itself irritated. So I'm just lightly grazing over the eye with the red. You can see how that like instantly adds that sense of irritation to the eye. I think we're gonna make the, the arm a little more dramatic. So you can see how on the arm, I'm not liking how this is looking, where the blood almost looks like it's been watered down. And I'm going to put on areas where it's just on the skin, I'm going to make it more red. And then I might come back in the end and make the bandages even darker. But I could also imagine that maybe she got this wound and then she wrapped the bandages over the wound, and maybe that's why the color looks so washed out. And that would make more sense. So then if that was the story that I'm kind of creating in my head right now for her, then I would be okay with it. But otherwise, that color, it, it just reads as kind of watered down. But it works in this situation. So always be thinking of the story that um, you're adding to your character if you're doing something like this. And just like I did before with the droplets, I'm going to have it be lighter in red, but then as it gets near to the actual point of the droplet, it's going to be darker. Okay. And then you can see what that layer looks like on and off. And once again, I'm going to go through that process of building up my value. So I'm going to choose that next color red. And I'm going to be very sparingly 
using this color. It's because it's so saturated, and especially with the colors I have laid out for her already, she's very neutral in the way that her color scheme is looking. So I don't want this red just become distracting, because I do want it to work with the concept rather than against. This almost represents like an open flesh wound where it's this red. So maybe this would work really well on like the lip area. So like I said, I'm not going to be using this highly saturated red for this concept because it, I don't think it would really match. But rather than, I'm going to go to the highlights. So let me go ahead and make a new layer. Grab that white, put it in the corner here. And for this, I'm going to zoom in. Because for highlights, I want to make sure that I'm really getting those areas. So I'm really going to focus on the areas where that the flesh wound seems more impactful. So the areas that are really that intense red, I'm pretty much just going to highlight them with this uh, white, or almost white color. And when, when working with highlights, I try to avoid working with pure whites. And I'm going to be using a slightly uh, grayed down version of that white. And the most important areas that I really want to hit are areas like those driplets that I have on the legs. Let me make it smaller. There we go. Then maybe add a few highlights on that upper area. Not too many. I don't want to get too crazy with the highlights, or otherwise it might not look as realistic. And when I turn that layer on and off, it's a very subtle effect, but it definitely has that extra sense of realism. So now the very last thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some yellow hues and purples to that eye to make it really feel like more of a bruised eye. And she almost is starting to look like a zombie. So when you're doing a character that looks like she's just been through hell and back, you want to be careful that you're not adding so much that it's just looking like another member of the undead. You want to keep it consistent and looking like, you know, she still is alive and just badly injured. And there we go. So now we have a character that looks like she has been injured badly, needs medical attention immediately, and it was really quick. So you guys can do these kind of concepts on your characters if needed, and you can do them really quick. So I want to thank you guys for watching this tutorial on creating blood. I hope it was helpful, and if you want to, you can download the reference guide and the actual PSD that we worked on in this tutorial, and I'll make sure I name all the layers. And if you want to download the brushes that were shown earlier, you can do that on our brushes page, and we even have a tutorial on how to make brush or blood brushes on your own if you would like. And with that, thanks again for watching.